two things will change your life, how-tos and why-tos, and we're going to cover both of those. But before we get to the details, what to do, let me give you the broad answer first. Here it is. Tomorrow, you can do the most remarkable things, no matter what happens. Let's start with that. Human beings can do unbelievable things, incredible things. A man can do the most amazing things with the most unamazing circumstances. A woman can do the most remarkable things with the most disastrous circumstances. There's plenty of proof. I found out kids can do remarkable things. That is, if they have remarkable things to do. I also found out if they don't have remarkable things to do, no telling what they'll do. <laughs> but see, kids can do remarkable things. People can do remarkable things. I'll tell you why human beings can do remarkable things. It's because they are remarkable. That's why they're not dogs, animals, fish, birds, amoebas. Humans are different than any other creation. When a dog starts with weeds, he winds up with weeds. And the reason is because he's a dog. But that's not true with human beings. Human beings can start with weeds and turn them into gardens. That's the advantage, being a human versus being a dog, turning weeds into gardens. Human beings can turn nothing into something, pennies into fortune, disaster into success. And the reason humans can do those remarkable things is because they are remarkable. So if I had a word with you tonight, one-on-one, -on -one, just you and me, I think my personal advice to you would be, reach down inside of you and come up with some more of those remarkable human gifts. They're there, waiting to be utilized. And then change anything for you you want to change. And I challenge you to do that because you can change. If you don't like how it is for you, change it. If it doesn't suit you, change it. If it doesn't please you, change it. If it isn't enough, change it. And I challenge you to do that because you can change. See, you don't ever have to be the same again after tonight, only by choice. If you don't like your present address, change it. You're not a tree. <laughs> Now, let me give you three steps to personal development. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. What does it take to really make the changes starting tomorrow? It takes more than philosophical pronouncement. I know that. It also takes more than enthusiasm. I know we're hearing a lot about enthusiasm these days, but see, that just won't do the job. We're still here on the old cliches of the 30s, right? To be enthusiastic, you must act enthusiastic. <laughs> but see, that's not gonna help. After you have leaped about, there are some things you've got to do <laughs> or it isn't going to change. See, you can get all excited about lifting 200 pounds till you get to the gym. And then you need a new excitement. And the new excitement is called discipline. Major step to human progress, discipline. If there's one thing to get excited over, that's it. Get excited over your ability to make yourself do the necessary things. What could you make yourself do starting tomorrow that would change it all? No telling. Now see, that's exciting. On any given day, you can massively change the direction of your life. Murder is a clear example that any one person on any given day can forever alter the course of their life. It just happens to be a negative act. But just as sure as you can commit a negative act, you can also commit a positive act and forever alter your life whenever you wish. Now that's exciting. And whatever that act might be that changes your life, the guy finally takes a shotgun to his car and blows out every window, destroys every tire, puts a hundred rounds in this shabby old thing. And he says, I have driven this embarrassing thing for the last time. 
And not only will I never drive it again, nobody else will ever drive it again. And he lets that shuddering thing stand there for a while as a monument to the day he said, today my life changes. Now who can do that? Anybody. When can you do it? Whatever day you pick. Now here's the key to discipline. Start with the little disciplines, get excited over the little disciplines, and get right on those because those will lead to the big ones. You can't handle the big challenges in life unless you take on the little ones. Make a list of all the things you can do, get right on those, discipline yourself for those, both for the results and for the muscle and for the practice. So that when life hands you some big challenges, you'll be ready, you'll have the muscle. But see, if you don't handle the small ones, you can't take care of the big ones. Okay, here's what else it takes for life change. Self-motivation, key phrase, self-motivation. I don't know why we call it self-motivation. It's really the only kind there is. You've got to motivate yourself. Because I found out you can't change people. They can change themselves, but you can't change them. Lord knows some I've tried. But see, it won't work. People have to change themselves. I learned some of those lessons early. I built a little sales organization way back in those early days. I'm 25 and I had some nice people. I said, I'm going to make these people successful if it kills me. I almost died. Right? I mean, you can't do that. See, I've discovered this. Good people are not trained. They're found. You find good people. You don't make them good. You find them good. Training really is for the purpose of finding good people. You don't need much instruction for a good person. But too much training probably means you got the wrong people. So you got to find the right people. That's the key to getting a good job done. One of the major things we learn in man management, lesson one, don't send your ducks to Eagle School. <laughs> Because it won't help. I mean, I'm telling you, it won't help no matter how good your school is. And the little eagle badge and little eagle hat. I'm telling you, it won't help. It won't help. You can tell whether your school's done any good, right? Is when it's over, right? The duck goes for his first rabbit and makes him a friend. You say, no, no, no. Anyway. So it takes self-motivation to really alter your life. And you don't want to give self-motivation away to somebody else and make it somebody else motivating you. The guy says, boy, if somebody just come by and turn me on, what if they don't show up? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> See, you've got to have a better plan for your life. Okay. Now, if you're excited and you're ready to change, let me give you three steps to start life change that can change your life, your personality, your lifestyle, everything can change. Here's the steps. Number one, find out how things work. The first key to doing better is find out. To change your life really, you need ideas. There isn't anything an idea can't change. And Schof taught me the major problem is lack of an idea, not a problem. At first, I didn't have any money. I said to Mr. Schof, I don't have any money. He said, that's not a problem. Now, see, up until then, I always thought it was. <laughs> right? I was confused. He said, no, no, the problem is lack of an idea on how to create money and wealth. It isn't lack of money, it's lack of ideas. So if you get the ideas, see, you can change anything. Now, to get ideas, you need a constant study of finding out. Now, Schof also said, when you find out something that works, put the information in your journal. Don't use your head for a filing cabinet. Put it in your journal so that you can do the next best thing. Repetition, repetition, repetition. Go over it. And if you repeat it, go over it, sure enough, someday, some mysterious day, the idea takes root, starts to grow, and shows up in your bank account, and your dress, and your personality, and your lifestyle. But capture the ideas in your journal. Find out how things work. 
Shelf gave me this word for my life change. He said, study. Great word. If you wish to be successful, study success. If you wish to be happy, study happiness. If you wish to be wealthy, study wealth. Don't leave it to chance. Make it a study. Some people just go through the day with their fingers crossed. See, that won't do it. You've got to study the things that can change your economic, social, spiritual, personal life. Now, here's a qualifying phrase. And we'll have several of these qualifying phrases throughout the seminar. Here's the first one. You may not be able to do all you find out. I understand that. You may not be able to do all you find out, but you should find out all you can do. See, you don't want to wind up at the end of your life and discover that you've lived only one-tenth of it. And the other nine-tenths went down the drain. Not for lack of opportunity, for lack of information. So that's number one, find out how things work. Now here's the best human virtue for finding out, curiosity. Make a note of that, curiosity, be curious. You might add a word to it that'll help, childish curiosity. What will kids do if they want to know something bad enough? Bug you, that's the phrase. They can ask a thousand questions. You think they're through? They got another thousand. They'll drive you to the brink. It's a virtue. When you gotta know, be like a child. In fact, Jesus, the master teacher said, unless you can become like little children, you might as well forget it. You don't have a prayer. Excellent advice. You gotta be like children. Four ways, in my opinion, to be like a child. Number one's curiosity, and number two is excitement. Get excited like a child over your ability to make yourself do anything for change. Third is faith. Have faith like a child. Adults are too skeptical. And fourth is trust. Trust is a childish virtue, but the rewards are incredible. So be like a child. Now, if you're curious, let me give you three ways to find out how to change anything, any life direction, any dimension. Here's three ways to find out how to change anything. Number one is to read. Become a good reader. All of the successful people I know and work with around the world, they're all good readers. Curiosity drives them to read. They got to know. They just read, 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 read. Become a good reader. Now, that's my opinion. Listen to the other lecturers and listen to me and make up your own mind. Don't be a follower. Be a student. Okay? I say, really, for life change, you've got to read. One way to learn is from your own experiences. But another way to learn is from other people's experiences. See, one book might save you five years if you read it. Did you know there's books on how to be stronger, more decisive, be a speaker, be a leader, have a better effect on other people, develop your personality. Did you know there's books on that and people don't read them? How would you explain that? And they can read. Did you know that hundreds of successful people have written their stories in books and they wrote down how they did it and people don't read it? How would you explain that? The guy's busy, I guess. You know, you get tied up. The guy says, well, yeah, you work where I work. By the time you struggle home, it's late. You got to eat a bite of supper, watch a little TV, get to bed. You can't sit up half the night reading, 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 reading. And the guy's behind on his car payment. Good worker, hard worker. Sincere, but you've got to be better than sincere and work hard. Otherwise, at the end of your life, you'll wind up cold, stony broke. You've got to be better than a good worker. You've got to be a good reader, my opinion. 
Now, you don't have to read half the night, okay? Although if you're broke, that's not a bad place to start, right? <laughs> Get on with the cure. But put this in your notes, 30 minutes a day. Just devote 30 minutes a day to reading. Stretch it to an hour if you can, but at least 30 minutes. Half rich isn't bad. Thirty minutes a day, read something positive, something challenging, something inspirational, something instructional. At least thirty minutes a day. And here's the next clue. Every day. Don't miss. Once you set this up, just don't miss. Miss a meal, but not your thirty minutes. Because you can get along without some meals, but you can't get along without some books. There's a Bible phrase that says, humans cannot live on bread alone or just food. It says the next most important thing to food is words. Words nourish the mind, makes us different than animals and dogs. Words nourish the soul. So humans have to have food and words in order to be happy and healthy. I told my staff the other day, some people read so little, they've got rickets of the mind. <laughs> They're undernourished mentally. So to get a good diet of words, I suggest good reading habits, 30 minutes a day. Now, some people don't read because they don't read well. I understand that. And the national average is fairly poor. People have fairly poor reading skills. They're still trying to operate on awkward old skills of the past, right? Reading one word at a time. And with such poor skills, when you read, the mind usually wanders. Because you can think about a lot of things. The mind is an incredible mechanism. And if you read poorly, the mind wanders around thinking of other things while you're trying to read. Did you ever read a page and wonder what it said? Right? <laughs> Say, I got to read that again. Right? That's because the mind is just doing this job, right? Just wandering around. Did you ever read yourself to sleep? See, that's another problem. The mind says, who needs this? Just shuts off, right? <laughs> Untaxed, right? Poor skills. Or a guy looks at a book, 500 pages, and says, no, you starting, right? I mean, I'd never get through this one. Anyway, in our weekend seminar, we take a whole section, about two, three hours, and we go through reading skills. How to read a book a day is the title of that subject. And I'll tell you what, if you can read a book a day, it'll change your whole life. I mean, a book a day will change your whole life. Expose yourself to a whole variety of things, spiritual, moral, personal, economic, history, geography, everything. I mean, you can really change if you read a book a day. So you might want to attend the weekend, get in on those reading class skills. It's incredible. A book a day will change your life. But hey, whether you read slow or fast or whether you read awkwardly or whether you read well, here's the key. Read. Don't miss. Here's what reading is. Reading is tapping the treasure of ideas. That's what reading is, tapping the treasure of ideas. And ideas can change any part of your life. And if you've got a good excuse not to tap the treasure of ideas at least 30 minutes a day, or spend the money and get the books, I'd love to hear it. Some people have excuses you wouldn't believe. I say, John, look, I got this gold mine. I got so much gold, I don't know what to do with it all. Come on over and dig, John says. I ain't got a shovel. <laughs> I say, well, John, get you one. He says, you know what they want for shovels? <laughs> Let me give you the two books that started my library 20, at age 25. My library now is worth many, many, many thousands of dollars, but it started with two books. Mr. Schoff recommended these to me, got me started. Schoff said, become self-educated. He said, standard education will get you standard results. And you can check those numbers and see if that's what you want. But if you want to go beyond that, you now have got to become self-educated. So he got me started on my library. He said, one of the ways is build your library. Now, I had a Bible, right? That was 66 books, so that's a pretty good deal. But here's what Elsie recommended. He said, number one, get the book, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Think and Grow Rich, if you don't already have it. 
The title should intrigue you. Think and Grow Rich. I found that book in a secondhand bookstore. I paid 47 cents for it. I've still got it. It's one of the rare hardback covers. I read it several dozen times. Shof taught me repetition is the mother of skill. Some of the ideas in that book helped to change my life. As I look back on it now, the book was worth several hundred thousand dollars, and I bought it for 47 cents. What a lesson I learned, the difference between cost and value. Before I met Mr. Shelf, I used to ask, how much does it cost? After I met Mr. Shelf, I asked, how much is it worth? I started basing my life on worth instead of cost, and everything changed. But that was book one, Think and Grow Rich. The second book he recommended I get was a book on nutrition. Shelf said, study nutrition. I think that first book was by Adele Davis. Eat right to keep fit, I think. I've got lots of them now, but I think that was the first one. Shelf said, study nutrition. And there's all kinds of books on nutrition. Just read them all. Some are a little weird, but, but read them all. Right? If you're weird, do the weird stuff. I mean, whatever. <laughs> but read them. Then make up your own mind. Remember, don't read and become a follower. Read and become a student. Make up your mind. Find a plan that works good for you but get the books on nutrition. Here's what Mr. Shelf said to me. Vitality plays an important part in doing well. Vitality. He said some people don't do well because they don't feel well. It's not that they're not intelligent. It's that they're ill. They don't have the zing and the fire and the vitality to do well. So he put it right on me about studying nutrition. He said, Jim, you wouldn't believe it. He said, I got this friend of mine raises racehorses. The guy's got nine books on how to feed horses. He does not have a book on how to feed himself. He said, my friend studies horse nutrition, <laughs> studies it. Vitamins, minerals, trace minerals, protein, amino acids, carbohydrates, fats, enzymes, proper balance for his horses, Shof said. He's a fanatic. And he said, you ought to see his horses. They're magnificent, beautiful, powerful animals. They can run like the wind. And he said, you ought to see him. He's a wreck. <laughs> he said, the guy feeds his horses better than he feeds himself. Do you believe that? In my later studies, I discovered some people feed their dogs better than they feed their kids, if you can believe that. Anyway, I didn't mean to give you a health lecture here tonight, okay? But hey, take care of yourself. Work on that part because it's one of the answers to doing well. There's even a Bible phrase that says, many times the spirit is willing, but the body's weak. Now see, you're in trouble. And that is a problem. You wake up in the morning and the mind says, let's go get them. And the body says, I can't even get out of bed. <laughs> so you got to work on both sides of this, right? Okay. But get your library started. Get the books. Put it together. Books are the trademark of civilization. It's fascinating to walk into someone's home and browse through their library because your library says something about you. So put your reading together. Very important. 